Yeah, so this uh, question, uh, it's asking X-rays of some wavelength, reflective crystal, second order maximum, and uh, this is the keyword, the Brock angle. And uh, my apologies, there's a, a lecture video that I where I did cover this, I meant to move it up, but just looking at it briefly, it looks like I haven't moved it up. So let me just show you where you can find it in the textbook. Because your textbook does cover it adequately. And um, in fact, I'm going to copy the formula from your textbook because I think I've forgotten the formula. Or if I try to remember it, I don't trust myself completely to remember the formula carefully. So let me... Um, both to show you where in the textbook it's covered and uh, copy a formula I need to use. <laughs> so it's in the section 4.6 x-ray diffraction. And within this section, they will show you a geometry for interference or diffraction grading that's a little bit different from what we've been using. So here it's the, what you have to imagine is uh, you have a material that you can express it as a crystal lattice. And uh, the light sources that are interfering with are reflections from different layers of the crystal. So really, the diffraction grading is here um, kind of vertically or through the thickness of the material. And um, when you work through the analysis of this angle, uh, the path length difference between uh, this path, the reflection from the very first layer and the uh, reflection from the next neighboring layer, which is how we do analysis for other diffraction grading too. This path length difference here, it's a given by twice of the uh, this difference. Uh, you can kind of look at it as uh, this bit here is the path length difference on the incoming side. This bit here is the path length difference on the outgoing side. So as you are detecting these two together, um, you have this D sine theta accumulated here. That's, uh, and the D is the spacing between the two neighboring na uh, neighbors or neighboring layers of the crystal structure. So it says um, um, X-rays of this wavelength reflect of, of a crystal like this. And they're saying the second order maximum. Uh, so, um, so we use the same kind of argument. So we have some path length difference. That divided by wavelength is what we want to relate to um, the, the interference conditions. And for the maxima, we are looking for constructive interference. So we are looking for uh, this uh, ratio to be uh, um, the uh, integral number of cycles. So we are looking for this to be an integer m. So when they say it's a second order, they are saying this integer n is 2 instead of 1. If it's 0, that's just a straight uh, normal incidence. Hopefully, there's a maximum there. Or sorry, um, if that's 0, sorry, it's, they work with the grading angle. So that would be where you are coming at basically at 0 angle, which is the light, the x-rays you are detecting is same x-rays that were coming in, not reflected at all. Um, so the first order would be as you make this angle larger and larger. So um, using this from the textbook, your delta x is 2 d sine theta lambda. And as you increase this angle uh, more and more, um, when m equals equal to 1, that would be the first of this angle where you get the theta maximum. And the next maximum, the second order, is where you'll see it for m equals 2. So uh, it's asking for what is the spacing between uh, scattering planes in this crystal. Uh, let me just do this in sage math. Um, so I have, I think I defined all these symbols before. So I have an equation of 2d times sine theta divided by lambda is equal to, let me say m for now. And I'm going to solve, oops, sorry. Uh, I keep pressing keys I didn't mean to. I'm going to solve this for uh, d. Uh, d is the separation. So, oops. What? Oh, I, I overrode the d earlier, I think. So I have to redeclare d as my variable and re enter that and then solve the equation for d. 
Okay. Um, so here I can just uh, uh, put this into a variable and plug in numbers. Uh, substitute in a wavelength of super short. Uh, I think if I keep uh, yeah, so d and lambda are the two only two quantities of the length. I think if I keep wavelength in the units of nanometers, my d will come out in units of nanometers. So I'm going to keep everything in nanometers. So wavelength, uh, m is equal to 2 here. And they gave us the angle theta of 22.6 degrees. So it's uh, degrees times uh, pi divided by 182 convert to radians. So that gives us uh, separation of 0.39 nanometer. I think that sounds reasonable. That's uh, uh, depending on whatever material is. The size of a hydrogen atom is about 0.1 nanometer. So that's the kind of the atomic size scale. So that seems reasonable to me. Uh, all right, I think we got two more questions of this type. So let's just complete them all. <laughs> it says, um, X-ray scattering experiment is performed on a crystal whose atoms form planes, right? Separated by, oh, here they are giving us the separation distance d. Says so using an X ray source of this wavelength, what is the angle with respect to planes in question at which the experiment needs to illuminate the crystal in order to observe the first order maximum? So for that first order maximum, we are saying our m is equal to 1. So you are imagining starting from theta equals 0, you get super large intensity basically what you're putting in. As you go to higher angle, the intensity will die off first, and then at some first angle, it will give you a maximum. So let me, uh, I have to resolve. So let me take this equation, uh, same equation. I think I haven't had to change anything. It's the same pattern, same arrangement. Let me solve it for theta this time and make sure that makes sense. And then my, um, I'm gonna substitute in the numbers we are given. I think uh, because d and lambda will uh, take the ratio, if I plug in both of these numbers in nanometers, then um, we'll be fine. Nanometers will cancel. Uh, so the separation between planes is 0 0.444 nanometer. Wavelength is 0 0.577 nanometer, short x-ray. Um, and uh, m is equal to 1. I think that's everything. Um, and uh, this is in radians. So you have to make sure you multiply by uh, 180 degrees divided by pi uh, to convert radians into degrees. So yeah, uh, now careful in how you read it. <laughs> this is the left-hand side. This is 57, whatever. That's just my conversion factor. This right-hand side is the number I'm looking for, 40.5. Yeah, I think if I enter the 41, it will say that's wrong. Three significant figures, that's uh, what you're going to get. Yeah. If you say 41, that's right at the limit, I think, yeah, it will say no. Yeah. All right, one more question. And it says, calcite crystals contains a scattering planes. Yeah, that's the main thing you're looking for. Because really, um, as so your textbook does give a more complex picture of the uh, crystal diffraction, like this pattern here. So um, so th the picture that we are displaying here, it's not the only circumstance where uh, an X-ray crystallographer might have to consider. But this is the kind of the easiest uh, situation to teach. That's why we teach this and have this few homework questions for you to do. So for this, um, again, the same setup, scattering planes separated by this. Um, and what is the angular separation between ah, first and second order diffraction maxima when x-rays of this wavelength are used? So I think the first thing to note is that these are really um, the numbers are pretty close, so I wouldn't feel comfortable using small angle approximation. Let me just uh, work out what the angles are for m equals 1 and m equals 2, so that I can just look at the numbers and take the difference. And I, we are still solving for theta, so I don't have to change those parts. I don't need to change the separation between scattering planes and the wavelength. Uh, let me do m equals 1 first, and then we'll see what m equals 2 looks like, 12 degrees, 
um, yeah, this was probably right at the limit where you could have used the small angle approximation. So the difference is 20.679 minus 12.513. Thirteen point, yeah. So if I used the small angle approximation, I would have given a version of this number, and uh, maybe it would have gotten it. But thirteen point um, two is the more accurate value that doesn't rely on small angle approximation. So yeah, that's the last question on this set. Um,